call upon the Honorable Finance Minister to respond to the debate. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman, sir. I start by thanking all the honorable members who, as you've just recollected, over 12 hours, or probably even slightly over 12 hours, have uh, spoken with great interest in matters related to the budget. And uh, as always, I shall take their names one by one, just so that my thanks is personalized to each one of them. So allow me to read out the names of all the members who have spoken on the topic since the day before yesterday. Shri Suresh Prabhu, Shri A. Nabhanita Krishnan, Dr. Narendra Jadav, <coughs> Shri Anil Desai, Dr. Anil Jain, sorry, Doc, uh, Shri D. Raja, Dr. Anil Jain, <coughs> Shri P. Chidambaram, Shri M. P. Virendra Kumar, Virendra Kumar, huh? Virendra Kumar, Virendra Kumar, Shri Ravi Prakash Sharma, Verma, Shri R. Vaidalingam, Shri Sukhendu Shekhar Roy, Shri Prasanna Acharya, Shri Ram Chandra Prasad Singh, Dr. K. Keshav Rao, Shri Elamaram Kareem, Professor Manoj Kumar Jha, Shri Naresh Gujral, Shri Turuchi Siva, Shri Prabhat Jha, Shri Kapil Sibal, Shri Vishambar Prasad Nishad, Shri T. Ratnavel, Shri Manas Ranjan Bhunia, Shri Biswajit Daimari, Shri Aras Bharati, Shri Ashwini Vaishnav, Dr. T. Subramaradi, Shri K. R. Arjunan, Shri Birendra Prasad Baishya, Shri Praful Patel, Shri Anil Baluni, Prof. M. V. Rajiv Gauda, Shri Vijay Sai Reddy, Shri Prabhakar Reddy Vemi Reddy, Shri Kanakkamedala Ravindra Kumar, Shri Binai Viswam, Shri Veer Singh, Shri Abdul Wahab, Shri Sushil Kumar Gupta, Shri Swet Malik, Shri Ripun Bora, Shri Kamakya Prasad Tasa, Shri Mohammad Ali Khan, Ms. Vansuk Sayam, no. Shri Ramda Satavle. Ma, you missed some names in between. Gop Gopal Narayan Singh. Gopal Narayan Singh. All right. I may add it, sir. I couldn't find it in the bulletin. Okay. But Shri Vansuk, Vansuk Sayam, uh, Miss Vansuk Sayam, sorry. Uh, Shri Ramda Satavle, Shri Son uh, Miss Sonal Mansingh, uh, Ronal Sapa Tlao, uh, Shri Kailash Soni, Shri Vijay Goel, Shri GVL Narsimha Rao, Shri Anil Agarwal, Shri RK Sina, Shri Mahesh Puddar, Shri KG Kanye, and Shri Gokula Krishnan. Once again, I put on record my appreciation for all the members who have taken part in this discussion. So as I said uh, during the budget speech, this budget was presented in a year when, because of the elections, we had an interim budget presented during February, and in a year when the current fin Finance Commission's term comes to an end. So the relevance of uh, referring the Finance Commission here is because the devolution of finances are decided by the Finance Commission. And as a result, everything that you do in the budget is very much influenced by the Finance Commission. And the existing Finance Commission's term ends this year, and the new Finance Commission's report is expected sometime during November of this year. So as a result, I just want the context to be laid that the budget is being presented, was presented, uh, on the one hand, having a bookend of the interim budget, which was presented in February, and on the other, the other bookend, which is of the Finance Commission. 
So uh, in that context, the budget, therefore, could go ahead with giving a vision, which was mentioned in the interim budget itself. The vision was for Aaron India, which is going to be very futuristic with a lot of transformational changes and about 10 different aspects which made up for what we have laid out as vision was all mentioned in the interim budget. I shall not really completely recall each one of them, but it is important for us to keep that in the background that this big picture which we tried projecting in this budget was essentially the big picture which comes out from the vision that we've laid out in the interim budget. And in achieving, in wanting to achieve in the next course of 10 years that vision, we have also given ourselves an interim, let us say, mid-course target, and that, will, that is the much talked about 5 trillion US dollar economy level that we wish to reach. It's a target because targets always help you to keep in the direction of achieving, wanting to achieve it, and therefore every scheme that you would want to plan, every activity that you would take will be all diverted with, a, with that kept in the focus in your mind and therefore the target achieved will help you to half achieve the vision that you've set for yourself for the next 10 years. So with that said, a few things which are mandatorily things which are uh, you know, presented before the House, I shall just bring it out uh, for the consideration of the House. Uh, the, with the constitution of the 17th Lok Sabha after the general elections in 2019 and the formation of the new government, the regular budget which I've referred to you now of 2019-20 was laid in the House. The regular budget for 2019-20, which includes the finance bill 2019, demands for grants 2019-20, will kind of cover the entire fiscal of 2019-20. Now, the budget, as I said, is an important milestone, particularly this year, because it is the second such a budget being presented post the implementation of the GST. So if GST was introduced in 1st July, on 1st July 2017, this budget is the second which is uh, presented to this House and the highlights of the budget estimates is something which I'd like to uh, present before you. With a continued emphasis on empowering the states, the total resources transferred to the states, including the devolution, of state share in taxes and releases under the centrally sponsored schemes in BE 2019-20 is estimated to be 13,29,428 crore. This entails an increase of 82,845 crores over the RE of 2018-19 and 2,44,298 crore more than the actuals for 2017-18. The next issue is of the budget 2019-20 reflects the government's firm commitment to substantially boost investment in agriculture, social sectors, particularly in education and health. Keeping the fiscal deficit at 3.3% of the GDP as against 3.4% which was envisaged in the in interim budget of 2019-20, government is committed to continue the path of fiscal consolidation without compromising on the requirements of public expenditure placed by the various sectors. So I like to underline that this is achieved through a prudent rationalization of expenditure and mobilization of additional resources. In the budget estimates of 2019-20, the total expenditure is placed at 27,86,349 crore, showing an increase of 3,44,136 crores over the BE of 2018-19. An increase again, an increase again of 3,24,000. 29,114 crores over the RE of 2018-19. The total expenditure includes a provision of 12,2404 crores under the schemes. So on the schemes, by item-wise, the budget documents do provide the details of how much has been alloc allocated for each of them, but totally we are saying that the expenditure 
has shown an increase from comparative BE of 1819. The revenue and the capital re receipts is something which I again would like to uh, put in on record before the members. The gross tax receipts are budgeted at 24 lakh 61,195 crores in BE 2019-20, which marks an increase of an increase of 2 lakh 13,020 crores, which is a rise of 9.48 percent, increase of 9.48 percent over the RE of 2018-19. Centers next centers net tax revenue, that is centers net tax revenue is nothing but after the transfer of state share and transfer to national disaster response fund whatever is with the center is the center's net tax revenue and that is estimated to be 16 lakh 49582 crore with again it is an increase of 1 lakh 65,176 crores, which is 11.13%, 11.13% over the RE of 2018-19. The non-tax revenue receipts are estimated at 3,13,179 crore in the BE of 2019-20. And, and the revenues expected from disinvestment are budgeted at a realistic at a realistic 1 lakh and 5,000 crores in BE of 2019-20. So I just want to very clearly make it uh, a point to reiterate the fact that every estimate, every estimate of receipts, projections that we've given are real, realistic and mind has been applied to the points. The projections made in the budget are real, realistic and adequately provided for, particularly for items such as items of expenditure such as defense expenditure, pensions and salaries, internal security and other welfare programs and establishment expenditure of the government. So to fully finance these expenditure commitments, necessary resource mobilization from tax and non-tax revenues have all been envisaged. So I just want to make sure that members are assured that every figure that we've quoted, particularly those for the projections for revenue receipts, have been after due consideration and are realistic. So I just want to draw the attention of the House through you. When we say that we have a vision for India, when we say that mid-course we want to ensure that we reach the target of the economy size to reach five uh, million US dollars level, trillion, uh, trillion uh, dollar US dollar level, it's not without a plan. And the plan is definitely, first of all, to increase investment which is coming into the country. And if we wanted to increase investment, what are the various steps we have taken in this budget which are proposed and those steps are taken into consideration because that will have directly an impact on the investment which can come into the country. And therefore, if that will promote the growth of the economy, what are the items that I want to mention before you is those, uh, th there is a list of it. Liberalization, further, further liberalization of FDI investment, that is foreign direct investment policy. Lowering of corporate tax to the level of 25%. For those whose annual turnover limit is not just up to 250 crores, but we have increased it to about 400 crores. Third is the income tax deduction of 1.5 lakh crores, uh, 1.5 lakhs on the interest paid on loans to take purchase of electrical vehicles. Then moving the GST council, which we propose to do, we are moving the GST council for the reduction of GST rates on electrical vehicles from 12% to 5%. Further, government has also increased the scope of voluntary pension scheme for retail traders and shopkeepers. And then, to, uh, by increasing the scope, we have only said 
Now it will be available for everyone, every shopkeeper and every retail trader with an annual turnover of less than 1.5 crores. Further, we are also saying that the government wishes to in the government wishes to push infrastructure development with an intention to invest 100 lakh crores in infrastructure over the next five years. So in order that the infrastructure development is given its due pace and the traction with which Manya Minister Nitin Gadkari had worked in the last term, we want to encourage infrastructure development and therefore we have expressed an intention to invest about 100 lakh crores in infrastructure over the next five years. Again, again, in order that the scheme for funding of upgradation and regeneration of traditional industries, we have said that we shall start to facilitate cluster-based development to make the traditional industries become more productive, more profitable, and also uh, become capable of generating sustained employment opportunities. We have also very clearly taken a pro-growth measure by reducing the customs duty on certain raw materials and capital goods. And to further promote domestic manufacturing, allowing one woman in every SHG uh, for a loan of up to one lakh in the mudra scheme. So it's important when all of us are repeatedly expressing, and rightly at that, expressing our concern Expressing our concern on the, about the farmers, it is important to note that the government has expanded the cash transfer scheme under the PM Kisan, providing an income support of 6,000 rupees per farmer per year. And this is now extended to all farmers, whilst earlier we had suggested that this will be applicable only for farmers with two hectare lo land or lower. Now it's applicable to all the farmers and therefore it's important to know that we have not forgotten the issue. This is one among them of attending to the farmer's requirement. Further, to give focused attention to issues of growth, the government has constituted a five-member committee at the Cabinet Committee on Investment and Growth and that is chaired by the Honourable Prime Minister. So, it is important that we realize that this government's vision has steps marked up even in the budget and showed in the budget so people who are reading it will at least now look at it from the point of view of the comprehensive steps that we have given towards achieving that vision. There's been this interesting debate saying too many numbers are floating around, we don't know which is right, we don't know why one economic survey should use one whereas the budget should use the other. I'd like to state before you, Honorable Chairman, sir, that the details or the statistics or the numbers which are given in the economic survey or in the budget are all authentic. But if only we can understand the context, I'll take a few minutes specifically on this issue. The growth rate of nominal GDP for 2019-20 in the budget document, in the budget document, has been projected at 12% over the advanced nominal GDP estimates of 188,40,731 crore for 2018-19. The advanced estimates of 2018-19 were released on 7th January 2019. The date is important, 7th January 2019. Now go over to the next. The growth rate of nominal GDP or for the year 2019-20 in the economic survey, as different from the budget, economic survey has been projected at 11% over the provisional nominal GDP estimate of 190,190,10,164 crores for 2018-19. The provisional estimates of 18-19 were released on 31st May 2019 date. That was January, this is May. Both the projections are consistent with each other as each of them project the nominal GDP of 211,607 crores for 2019 and 20. 
This is because as compared to the economic survey, the higher GDP growth rate of 12 percent projected in the budget documents for 2019-20 is on a lower GDP base uh, for 2018-19. So when you, when you kept yourself on a lower GDP rate, obviously the figure will differ. A lower GDP base for 2018-19, I'm explaining as to why the budget used that figure, the lower GDP base for 2018-19 has been used in the budget documents as the same GDP base was used in the interim budget of 2019-20, presented in January 2019. Using the same GDP base ensures comparability of deficit ratios projected for 2019-20 in both the interim and the July budget. So for keeping comparison easier, like with like comparison to happen, budget documents have used those projections rather than the uh, provisional estimates. So that explains why the figures were slightly different in economic survey, right in its own capacity, different from budget figures, right in their own capacity, all of which are authentic in their own way. So I hope this dispels the doubts people had about too many numbers floating around. So with just a very quick reference I want to make to the kind of funds which states receive because disaster is a very serious issue on which center shares revenue with the states and when you do give it to different states as per a formulation arrived by the finance commission, monies go as per the formulation and there are no discretionary decisions made on that. Now therefore, central government, I just want to make this plain before this August house, central government provides funds through National Disaster Response Fund, NDRF, which is a CES-based fund, meant for providing relief of immediate nature in case of natural calamities in states. NDRF is constituted under the section of 46 of the National Disaster Management Act of 2005. National Calamity Contingency Duty, the NCCD, is levied to finance the NDRF and additional budgetary support is provided as and when necessary. The provision also exists to encourage any person or institution to make a contribution towards the NDRF, eventually to, uh, eventual to the implementation of the GST itself collection on account of the NCCD is on lower side and therefore gross budgetary support is being provided to supplement the requirement in this respect as regards the NDRF fund. In addition, funds are also allocated under the State Disaster Response Fund, which is the SDRF, and as Finance Commission's grants. I want to just remind the members that the amount of annual contribution to the SDRF of each state for each financial year would be as recommended by the Finance Commission during its award period. So there's nothing that the central government does differently for different states. It's as per a formula which is given by the Finance Commission. And as long as that particular Finance Commission's years of currency hold those five years, it goes as per that formula. The share of the central government in the SDRF shall be remitted to the state governments in two installments, one in June and one in December. Similarly, state governments shall also transfer their contribution to the SDRF in two installments, June and December, and in only in exceptional cases that if the Ministry of Home Affairs, upon being satisfied that exigencies of a particular calamity so warrant may recommend an earlier release of the central share up to 25 percent. This is only as a matter of information because most often when disaster unfortunately strikes a state, there is a call for urgent help which the center is duty bound to do and it shall. But there is no element of discretion here that we choose to give one to one state and lesser to some other state. The formulation is already given by the Finance Commission. So I want to just 
expand a bit on non-performing assets. Because in our economy, Honorable Chairman Sir, in our economy, the impact of NPAs for several years now has left, left a deep impression as a result of which it is the duty of the government to ensure that the banks or the affected companies or the assets are all reviewed and solution given in such a way that the problem of NPA is judiciously um, resolved. So the banking system in India had faced a lot of challenges in the, bankrupt, uh, in the backdrop of difficult global economic condition. And that lasted for a long period. As a result, it had impacted banks' asset quality, their earnings, and capital adequacy. The problems in the banking sector have been further aggravated due to the stressed non-performing assets, which were recognized as such after the Reserve Bank in December 2015 did an asset quality review. The primary reasons put by the Reserve Bank of India as cause for the uh, non-performing assets were spurred in the stressed assets in recent times, leading to aggressive, uh, caused by aggressive lending practices during a downturn, loan frauds, corruption in some cases, and also the economic slowdown. There were also systemic factors which added to it. And the six systemic factors can be listed out, a culture of lax tra uh, credit discipline, lack of domain expertise for loans of a specialized nature, and large exposure to consortium lending, non-adherence to loan covenants, and so on. So our government came up with a four hours strategy consisting of recognition of NPA's transparency, resolution, recovering value from stressed accounts, I said four R's, resolution, recovering value from stressed assets, recapitalizing public sector banks. You, uh, you've come to know that even in this current budget, we have given a large chunk, chunk of money for the recapitalization of banks and reforms. So the four R's, strategy of resolution, recovering value from stressed accounts, recapitalization and reforms of the PSBs have resulted in a great deal of easing of the NPA situation. I just want to also tell you comprehensive steps have been taken by our government to expedite and enable the resolution of NPAs through various other means also. Change in the credit culture was affected with the insolvency and bankruptcy code, the IBC, which fundamentally is changing the creditor-borrower relationship. The securitization and reconstruction of financial assets, enforcement of Security Interest Act has all been amended, and as a result, with a provision for three months imprisonment in case the borrower does not provide assets detail in time, and for the lender to get possession of the mortgaged property within 30 days. This was definitely a, a paradigm shift in terms of dealing with insolvency related matters. Suits for recovery of dues are also filed by banks before the DRTs. Six new DRTs have been established to ex expedite recovery. Over the last five years, and this is important, I draw the attention of the members through you, Honorable Chairman. Over the last five years, financial years, PSBs were recapitalized to the extent of 3,19,497 crores. That's the extent to which we have ex extended recapitalization with an infusion of 2,52,987 rupees by 87 crores of rupees by the government and mobilization of over 66,510 crores by the PSBs themselves. So the NPA issue has been comprehensively addressed by the government. So I move over to talking about agriculture. I've had 
quite a lot of members speak rightly about the concerns in agriculture. I want to say that the measures that the government has taken are not just on one particular issue of giving them some kind of a supportive income, but a, a large canvas of reforms which will help the recovery of agriculture as a sector. Our farmers have actually faced a lot of difficulties, but this government has ensured that we support the farmer through various different measures. I am sure the Agriculture Ministry themselves will give an elaborate account of what they have done, but here are a few things which I want to uh, draw your attention. Agriculture and the challenges in agriculture are not something which have come out only on Ju uh, at a particular time in June 2014. Not even has it come just in the year 2015. These are legacy issues which have been festering India over several decades. And therefore, when we are looking at s solutions for agriculture, they have to be comprehensive. After taking over the responsibility in 2014, sir, the agriculture sector needed comprehensive reforms was recognized by the Honorable Prime Minister and therefore he committed himself for doubling farmers' income by the year 2022. And for that, we have adopted a lot of strategies. And the, the strategies that we've adopted are please, based please. on the recommendation. The strategies that we've adopted are not something which is off the cuff. They are based on the recommendations of the Committee on Doubling Farmers' Income. So let's realize that the government's measures are after due consideration, consultation with stakeholders and also the committee which has come up with several recommendations. So then, as a result, within the last four years, I can quote the levels to which Indian farmers have faced challenges but come out with brilliant results. Today, thanks to our policies, the country now produces food grains and the food grain production is 289 million tons. Horticulture output is 385 million tons. And milk, 187 million tons. Some of these, some of these figures are really taking India to a height which is thanks to entirely due to the farmers, but it takes India to a height where we are probably in the top league of first in production of something, second in the production of something, top of the league we have enabled and the farmers have repeatedly faced challenges and proved themselves and this has got to be with an appreciation to the farmers' contribution to the Indian economy. The Universal Soil Health Card has enhanced the intensity of coverage under micro-irrigation, neem-coated urea, and providing e easy access to all the fertilizers that the farmers will want to use, thus reducing the cost of cultivation. Sir, here I would like to remind through you, the entire house, that today the Indian farmer does not require to stand in a queue to buy a bag of fertilizer. And even when he stood earlier, the treatment given to the farmers will never be forgotten. They were thrashed. Yes. Police fired at them. And these kind of things did not happen when they stood for queue when earlier. But now they don't even have to stand in queue to obtain fertilizers. So that's a change which we have brought in this government. Sir, the new policy on MSP is something which I'd like to draw your attention to. More than 22 items of agricultural produce are listed in the MSP list. Till before 2014, majorly just for wheat and rice and not for any other crop was MSP provided. Although it was in the list for which MSP could be given. But it is our government which after coming into power in 2014 has provided MSP for all the items of agriculture produced in that list and not just given the MSP but ensured procurement happens in those prices. So it's one thing to declare it in the paper and another to go and procure from the ground from the farmers at that price which is declared as MSP. So with the adoption of this new policy, all the commodities which are mentioned in that list of MSPs which are notified 
have seen a big jump under the MSP. So this is an important step that this government has ensured and as a result of which again I would like to uh, place on record my appreciation for farmers in bringing a Dalhan revolution in this country. This country had to import dal every year because we produce less than what we consume in pulses. And every year to import used to be a big business. And I remember when in 2014-15, when our government had come for the first time, 250 rupees stuck you went with Arhar price. The price of Arhar reached 250 rupees. Urad went to 200. And many other pulses also reached that level. But tell me, sir, I'd like to put this question as a mark of uh, observation through you for the rest of the members. Since after 2014-15, have we heard skyrocketing prices on pulses? Never. The prices of pulses have been kept completely under control, thus taking care of the arm army's protein requirements. So we would like to tell you that not just in pulses, the Indian farmers have performed brilliantly and we are very grateful for their achievement, but so is the case now where the Prime Minister has clearly laid a, a blueprint before us to ensure that import of edible oil also should come down. For which, even in Tilhan, oil seeds, we have ensured that we'll have a plan for farmers to support them, give them the right price, procure if necessary, and make sure oil seeds are produced as much as we require so that the import of edible oils can come down. I'm sure the Agriculture Minister can speak more about it, but this is one of the steps taken for a self-sustained agriculture in India. So market reforms in agriculture. We spoke about it in the budget. I like to repeat it here. Market reforms has been the policy cornerstone for us. We had ensured that by building a national agricultural market through the ENAM, a new market architecture consisting of GRAMS, which is the GRAMS, Agricultural Marketing Societies, competitive wholesale markets can be brought in for agriculture exports also. So the Ministry of Commerce also has adopted an agri-export policy with targeting to double the agri-exports by 2022. So we are not talking about increasing the farmers' wages to tw double uh, by 2022, even agri-exports will double by 2022. So it's a comprehensive, holistic approach for agriculture. Sir, this does not mean we have forgotten the welfare of the farmers. These are measures through which his productivity, his better price obtaining, and his export are all being taken care of. But on the other side, we are ensuring that the welfare of farmers are also attended to. PM Kisan is a major program which has been rolled out, 6,000 rupees per month per, uh, uh, per year to each farmer has been sent. This historic step, this historic step involves 87,000 crores in a year and that has been provided for by the government. We are also now working on a pension scheme for the farmers called Pradhan Mantri Man Samman Yojana, through which farmers, when they reach 60 years or above, will have some pension to fall back on. There's also greater focus on risk management through crop insurance schemes. So pension schemes for which the provision happens from today will of course benefit the farmer when he becomes 60, but that's not to be ridiculed. I would like to put that before you, Chairman pension schemes for which provisions are made now will benefit the farmer in future, but that has a thought of today with a financial implication of today and therefore it is not something we are talking about which is going to bear fruit after 60 years, after 50 years, 40 years, depending on the farmer's age. That's not a matter to be ridiculed upon. I like to submit it to the opposition. So then, Swaminathan Commission. Everyone has spoken about it, which is a very good, intensively researched uh, commission report, the National Farmers Commission, as, is, as it is called. I like to bring to the notice of the House that of the 272 recommendations, we have already implemented many of them, and the most important of the recommendations, 
relates to giving the farmer 50% of cost of production as profit margin. It is our government, I like to underline here, it is our government that took the historic decision of providing a minimum of 50% as the margin of profit on the cost of production in the year 2018. So Swaminathan Commission, everybody talks about it, but I'm sorry, it was lying in please. wait. No running commentary, please. It was lying in wait for several years, but it was us who took it up in 2018 to implement this point. So anyone who talks about well, um, National Farmers Commission. No, no, please. I have not called. We have not called you, Mr. Ramesh ji, please. So, so. No, please. So whether different or this, the they haven't Minister done Minister an inch. Alex, she is making her <laughs> submission. We have to hear it. And as and when we get an opportunity, need not correct it. Don't worry, Picard will be there. Sir, now that uh, there's so much thought on the no, Farmers' Commission, that's sir. That's not the practice. So because there's so much uh, very clearly uh, picking on uh, with a toothpick, I'd like to say, we've implemented this and we're making a claim for implementing this. this. This commission's report was languishing for several years. Not an inch was done by the previous government, previous government before 2014. So to correct me is very well. To correct me on the details is very well. But let me ask you this question, sir, through you, let me ask the members who had received the Finance Commission, National Farmers Commission's report, the government that received it didn't do anything. We have done it and I'm claiming about it. You may have an argument over it, but we have done it. You may have an argument over it. Sir, therefore, MSPs are notified annually for Karif and Rabi crops based on the recommendations of the Commission on Agricultural Costs and Prices it is the Ministry of Agriculture which examines and makes appropriate recommendations to the Cabinet for consideration. Accordingly, MSPs have been notified regularly, including for Karif of 2019. So timely announcement of MSPs gives the farmer great comfort. Sir, we've also spoken about zero budgeting for farming on which I have said very clearly, many states, many states have already started doing some work or the other. We recognize the work which is being done by different states, governed by different parties, but we at the national level want to underline the importance of a zero budget farming. And therefore, when I talk of zero budget farming, it's more specifically to address farmers related issue. And I'm just leaving at that, there can be a lot of discussion over it, but I just want to underline the fact, together with this, however much the opposition might want to talk about, I want to say the crop insurance scheme is something on which I just want to read some numbers. In 2016-17, sir, the gross premium was 22,103 crores. Claims paid were 16,257 crores. And number of farmers who benefited from are 146 lakhs of farmers. Now, in 2017-18, the claims which were paid were 21,270 crores. And 175 lakh farmers have benefited from the crop insurance. So even as we are talking about monies being given to states, monies probably getting reduced under, under the central schemes, I will come up with details for particularly the Manrega, for particularly the PM Awaz Yojana, on which quite a lot of questions have been raised. I will give you the specifics. But before I do that, one data which I want to share with you through you in this August House is resources transferred to state and union gov territory governments. So just for comparison, I know a lot of recommendations of the Finance Commission have influenced many of the resources getting transferred to the states post the 14th Finance Commission, but for comparison's sake, 
In 2008-9, central assistance to states, including center sector, central sector, and centrally sponsored schemes and other transfers, were 20, uh, 2 lakh 4,389 crores in 2008-9. 2 lakhs 4,389 crores. I quickly move over to 2013-14. Central assistance to states, including central sector and centrally sponsored schemes and other transfers to the states in 2013-14 was 2,55,968 crores. Now I just want to draw your attention to 2018-19 revised estimates. 3,70,691 within five years. Sir. And now in the BE 2019-20, 3 lakhs 89,802. This is what is going through the central schemes. So I just want to be sure, you may call it as thanks to Finance Commission, but it is this government which received the recommendation and has immediately implemented. So questions about central schemes not receiving money, this is the amount which is going through the central schemes. We have acted upon the Finance Commission. <laughs> this will not go on record. Please, carry on. Thank you, sir. Carry on. Now, yeah. again, yeah. question. At an appropriate time, you can... There is no largies. Of course, no largies. The largies given to anybody, center and state, all of us are responsible and answerable to the people of the country. And I have not implied in any way that it is the largies that the center is giving. Sorry, that is not the interpretation anyone should have because I have not implied it. Now, coming to Manrega, sir. In 2018-19, the BE was kept at 55,000 crores. However, because it's a demand-based demand scheme, however, depending on the demand for work, as Mandrega is a demand-driven scheme, the allocations were enhanced to the RE level of 61,084 crores. 55,000 raised it to the RE level to 61,084 crores. So compared to the BE 2018-19 of 55,000 crores, there has been an increase of 5,000 crores in Manrega allocation. Additionality will be examined at the RE stage. In the current year's budget, in the BE 2019-20, allocation under the Manrega is 60,000 crores as opposed to 55,000 earlier. And which again, I say, at the RE stage, de depending on the demand-driven scheme, if more demands are asked, we will give more, because it's a demand-based scheme. Similarly for PMAY, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, sir. I'm talking of PMAY rural. In RE 2018-19, sir, PMAY allocation was 19,900 crores. Additionality, the external uh, extra budgetary resources support of 10,668 crores was also provided. The total support thus was to the tune of 30,568 crores in 2018-19. In the BE of 1920, the budgetary support has been pegged at 19,000 crores. PMAY beneficiaries are almost being fully covered, but if required, the fund can be augmented at the RE stage or with EBR. The decision on EBR, just for the records, is not yet taken. Now, PMAY urban. In RE 2018-19, the PMAY allocation was 6,505 crores. Additionally, EBR support of 20,000 crores was also provided. The total support thus was to the tune of 26,505 crores in 2018-19. In the BE 2019-20, which is current uh, that we are talking about, the budgetary support has been pegged at 6,000 
804 compared to 6500 at that time, 6805 crores and an EBR support of 20,000 crores making the total support for PMAY urban at 26,805. This implies an overall increase or of about 340 crores. So I hope the Manrega PMAY allocations are now clear. There is no decrease anywhere. Sir, inflation is an important indicator through which the management of the economy is taken up. When prices go up, causing inconvenience to the consumer, it is rightly a matter on which everybody... We will, uh, we will conclude after the conclusion of the finance minister reply. So, when concern is expressed about inflation, it's only right that we should take care, the government should take care that ordinary citizens are not one suffering. Time, if she take one or two more hours, we'll go, but that will be after the last. She will not take that point, don't worry. She is one by one clarifying all the points. Let us be happy. Okay. Okay. And please, uh, Karita ji, let her conclude. She is almost coming to the end. She will conclude it. Why are you unnecessary? Appearing as if we are not willing to. This is Finance Minister of India, the two budget reply. So, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that the members had spent long hours last evening. I am not even spending that many hours. I have to respond to each one of you all. So kindly, sir, as you have suggested, I will try to make it short as possible, but I should not commit the error of ignoring points which have been raised by several of the valuable uh, honourable members. Sir, inflation, as I said, is a very important point on which governments are normally questioned, saying, can you see the hardship faced by the consumer? And it is all inflation that like, I like to present before you that the government between 2014 and 19 and even today has completely kept control of inflation has never been allowed to raise its dirty head to inconvenience consumer and on that I just want to give you a very quick rundown on the numbers sir when I am talking of consumer price index based the CPI inflation based on CPI, inflation based on CPI in 2014-15 when we had just formed the government, the headline inflation was at 5.9 percent. Between 14 and 19, 15 down to April 2019, that 5.9 percent inflation based on CPI has come down to 3 percent only. We have ensured that all through and nowhere is there a dip and rise. I can read the total number of figures every year between 14, 15, 5.9, 15, 16, 4.9, 16, 17, 4.5, 17, 18, 3.6, 18, 19, 3.4. And now in May 19, it's come down to 3. So nowhere have we allowed even a little rise in the inflation. Now, if that's the case with the headline, what was the case with the food inflation, which affects food products? Sir, in 2014-15, one of the reasons which it formed a very important part of the campaign of 2013-14 election to the Lok Sabha was food inflation was beyond an ordinary citizen. It was at 6.4% level, making food grains very expensive, food products very expensive. If 14-15, Food inflation based on CPI was 6.4, sir. 1516, it came down to 4.9. 167, it came down to 4.2. 1718, it came down to 1.8. And now, and now, April 19 figure is 1.1. Provisional figure for May 19. Provisional for May 19, it's at 1.8. So complete control over inflation is the achievement of this government between last time and within one year, one month after coming now. 
So inflation, which is a in very, very powerful tool to gauge people and their levels of satisfaction is, this is the record I have to place before you, sir. So I can go on to speak about what we've done on uh, startups because that Im it has a big impact on uh, young people who want to be uh, very innovative, come contributing to the economy. But before I do that, of course, I, for the sake of the members, I went through the budgetary allocations for each of the schemes which have an impact on the common man. I, I did this scheme, this analysis for about 99 schemes which have an impact on common man. But from among them, I just read a few where there should be no doubts whether our allocations have come down or gone up. I'll just read a few of them, sir, so that I can submit this paper for people's uh, uh, further research. The Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Program, last year, 2018-19, 55,000 crores, which I just read out. Now it is 60,000, gone up. Umbrella scheme for the development of scheduled CAS, 5,183, gone up to 5,445. Sir, umbrella program for the development of scheduled tribes, 3,806, gone up to 3,810. Umbrella program for development of minorities, 1,440, gone up to 1,590, all in crores. Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana, 9,429 crores to 9,682 crores. Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, 19,000 crores for last uh, uh, BE, retained at 19,000 crores. It's not come down. National Rural Drinking Water Mission, 7,000 crores has now gone to 10,000 crores. Sir, National Health Mission, 30,000 crores, 30,006, 34 crores is now gone to 33,651 crores. National Education Mission, sir, 32,613 has gone up to 38,507. The national program on midday meal in schools, very important for, our, for the children's nutrition. 10,500 crores has gone up to 11,000 crores. Sir, umbrella ICDS, 23 ICDS, very important again, 23,088 crores of 1819 has gone to 27,584 crores. Sir, National Livelihood Mission, 6,060 crores has gone to 9,774 crores. So skill development, jobs and skill development, 5,071 crores has gone to 7,260 7, crores. So I can go on, sir. Crop insurance, 13,000 has become 14,000 crores and so on. But I'll, uh, if necessary, I'll always share this. So I've already mentioned about the monies uh, allotted for SCs and STs. I just want to say the allocation for the benefits of budgetary provisions for the benefit of scheduled caste has gone up by 30.6%. Scheduled tribes has gone up by 29.3%. Women gone up by 10.2%. Children gone up by 13.6%. So let it be assured in the South, sir, through you, Chairman, my fiscal discipline does not mean I've cut on social welfare projects at all. 3.3 is achievable, and we shall achieve it without cutting down on any of the social welfare. Northeast regions, we have allocated 25.5% more just so the Northeast region is given priority in development. So as I said, on startups, there's quite a lot, but I wouldn't go into the details. So I'd like to come to a very important section, sir. Yesterday, several members have spoken on many things, all of which I thought if I collate and put it topically, I'll be able to answer, which is what I've done. But specifically on pointed issues, I want to respond, and allow me to do that. 
I, I won't take much of a time, but it's important. So kindly. So former finance minister, Sri P. Chidambaram, spoke on a lot of matters which are absolutely relevant. I first of all put on record my appreciation for the fact that after his input and intervention, he came across walking through the aisle to me to say that he shall not be here when I'm giving the reply because he has some previous commitment already made in Chennai. As a result, he will not be here. I'm very grateful and I really appreciate the gracious step that the former uh, minister has taken to come and tell me that he's not going to be around when my reply is being given. So some of the parliamentary best practices, I do place my appreciation. He had raised a lot of issues. And of course, in his own suave, soft and very, very well read and being a very experienced finance minister has said a lot of things on which I will definitely want to reply point by point. First of all, sir, he had quoted a lot of figures and actually they are attractive to hear and they are also very captivating thinking, whoa, why? This is where the government has been put on the mat. Look at the figures and you've claimed and projected numbers which are not achievable at all. This is experience speaking. Can I take it lightly? Not at all. So, on the specific four figures that he item-wise named, he said, income tax, you've given yourself that kind of a projection, not achievable. He had said, sir, that last year, it was seven point something. And you've given a projection of 23.25. How are you going to achieve it? Very relevant question, sir. But I'd like to point out here, and that is why I think I've requested your permission, that since members will not have copy of the budget before them, just the relevant pages I wanted to circulate, and you've been very kind enough to give me the permission. Just in case members would want to have a look at it, they can have a look at it. So, Sri Chidambaram has said income tax was at a certain level, 4,61,654. And he compares just the income tax. So, generally, income tax includes income tax, the STT also in it. And together with it, corporation, corporate taxes also added. So all of them together make income tax. So if you have to look at income tax, you will take the figure, which is income tax, STT, and corporate tax together and compare like with like. I don't know, but I'm doing a little reverse calculation, a little liberty taken on the figures quoted by Sri Chidambaram because he's not explained how we arrived at a certain figure, but they are not part of my budget in some cases, so I need to explain saying. He's taken the figure for 2018-19 of just income tax and compared it with the previous years, income tax, STT, and corporate tax, and then said, oh, your growth rate was this, 
and the next time he compares again just the income tax. I am reverse working. I am not saying this is what P. Chidambaram ji has done, but otherwise I can't see where he has got these numbers from. So, income tax of 2018-19, he again compares just the income tax perhaps without adding income tax, STT and the corporate tax to get the total, but compares just the income tax with the total and says your number is 23 uh, point, uh, compares it and gets a figure of 23.25. He's in excluded corporation ta corporate tax totally. I think it is a slip, but I'm sorry. Our, our figures are given in the budget document and we stick to the numbers as achievable, as realistic, as possible for us to reach. So on that number, I would like to put this as my possible inference of the way in which Sri P. Chidamaram has quoted some numbers. So it's convenient to just compare just income tax with a total of uh, taxable income, which is something like 5 lakh something, 69,000, and then say your number is this. How are you going to achieve it? I'm sorry you missed out on corporate tax. Sir, second, he spoke about, so just for the records on the income tax, just so we are very clear, I like to say this, the provisional collection of personal income tax for the year 1819 as per CGA website is 4,73,182 crore which is including STT. Actual collection of personal income tax for the year 2017-18 as reported in the budget documents is 4 lakh 30,722, which is given in the page 2 of the receipt budget 2019-20. That's what I'm circulating so that you know I'm talking actually what is in the budget documents. According to the growth in personal income tax collection for the year 2018-19 is 9.84% as per the CGA provisional over the last fiscal. And that is also attached. The Honourable Member, Sri P. Chidambaram, I am taking his name because he had clearly said he is not around and exempted himself. I hope you have no objection. Accordingly, the Honourable Member has taken the gross figure including STT for the year 2017-18, that is 4,30,772 crores, and compared it with the PIT, personal income tax collection, excluding, excluding STT, for the year 2018-19, that is 4,61,654 crores, and arrived at a growth rate of 7.1%, which is what he quoted. Had he included the STT in both the figures, the growth would have been 9.84 in the place of 7.1. Similarly, the projected gross PIT, personal income tax collection, including STT, 4B 2019-20 is 5,69,000 crore and has been compared to the PIT collection excluding STT for the year 2018-19, i.e. that is 4,61,654 crore to arrive at the growth rate of 23.25. So not comparing like with like. Had he included the STT, the growth rate would have been 20.24%, which is achievable, which is what I'm saying, which is what is said in the budget document, which is achievable considering our past record over the last few years and also imposition of higher surcharge on income tax, high income individuals. And that's also, you can see it, it is in the website available. I'm just showing a picture. This is not attached to the papers I've given you. Now, sir, next it comes to the customs. Customs, Sri Chidambaram said, customs was negative by 8.6%, minus 8.67. That is the actual growth of 2018-19 over 2017-18. He claimed it's negative. How was this figure arrived at? It would appear, and this is again my inference, 
that Act 12 of 2017-18, that is 1,29,030 crores, has been compared with the actual of 1819, which is 911 crores. It appears that the figure has been taken from the CGS website, the website I'm showing you, which is not part of the budget document. It's the central government auditor's website, which eventually will get audited by the CAG. And subsequently in 2020-21 budget, next year's budget, we'll find a place. But it does take that whole year before that gets confirmed, but experienced finance minister, former finance minister, chose to pick that number up and wanted to compare other than what I've said in the budget. That number will come when I'm talking about the budget of 2020-21, but he's taken that already. It appears that the figure has been therefore taken from the CGS, Controller of Government Audit, website which is still only provisional which is only provisional, but he's taken it already. All right, so what is the correct picture? The correct picture is in 2017-18, sir, in the first quarter was the pre-GST which included CVD and SAD. There is a systemic little correction which everyone will have to take into consideration. This needs to be removed from the collection figure of 1718. All this will be done during the CAG for the first quarter for arriving at appropriate comparison. But we didn't wait for the CAG. We've taken it up. The CAG would look at this correction which has to be done because post-GST, the CVD and SAD have now been taken out. So with this correction, with this correction which is necessitated post-GST, the actual growth of customs in 2018-19 would come around 37%. In the first quarter of 2019-20 itself, the actual duty, customs duty collection stands at 39,036 crores. In this first quarter, we've already collected 39,036 crores. If you were to just scale it up for the next remaining three quarters, we will reach the B final figure of 1,55,904 crore, which is absolutely achievable and realistic. So the customs figure, which we had quoted as 32, which was subject to a lot of consternation in the mind of our former Finance Minister saying, 32% in customs, can you achieve it? Yes, sir, we can achieve it, and probably even more. So the next point, central excise was flat. Sri P. Chidambaram said yesterday, central excise was flat, negative by even half a percent, projection is 15.5. How is that possible? He had raised a very legitimate question, sir. But now, I just want to say, how did he arrive at this figure? Again, this seems to be a conclusion derived from the comparison of actuals of 2017-18, which is 2,58,834 crores, with the RE of 2018-19, which is 2,59,000 crores, 612. And my response to that is 40,400 400 crores, 40,400 crores additional central excise revenue has been shown in the general budget vis-a-vis -vis the interim budget of 2019-20, which was presented in February, is on account of the CS, which is the central excise duty or sex, says which hike was on motor spirit, on high-speed diesel at, at, at the rate of 2 per litre. This will result in some increase in revenue and amnesty scheme is also planned uh, which is announced in general budget 2019-20 with respect to tax litigations. Tax litigation matters of central excise and service tax and that will result in some additional revenue too and therefore in view of the above the central excise target of 3 lakh crores 
for 2019-20 is absolutely realistic. Let me assure you, former minister, whenever he gets to know the details of this uh, budget, we shall achieve the target we've given ourselves. And finally, sir, even more, what I would think uh, outrageous, outrageous is the last year GST increased by 3.38, and the honourable minister, former minister, said projection is 45 percent. How will you achieve it, sir? I'm I'm really surprised that I have to respond on fundamental facts of the numbers, but I will do it for the benefit of the house. 45 percent product per projection. How will you achieve it? It is not understood. And I'm saying this very clearly after having done all kinds of homework. In the first two, I did some reverse calculation and thought this is perhaps the way. And I'm not saying this is certainly the way, perhaps the way. But in this case, I'm unable to do even that. It is not understood as to how these figures have been arrived at. I honestly don't know how he's arrived at, at this. The actual revenue collection of GST for center in 2018-19 was 5,81,563. This is provisional a figure. CGST plus IGST and CC. The present target has been kept at 6,63,343 crores, which is a growth of only 14.1 percent, sir. Where is 45? Where is 14.1? Taking into account and consideration a lot of IT initiatives, analytics, and new GST returns, which is likely to be launched. This is an absolutely realistic target. So I just want to assure former finance minister, the numbers need correction, sir. If I can be kind, that's how far I can say. And a few more issues. With that, I'll finish it, particularly because it's response to the former finance minister. Sir, very relevant question was asked. Very, very relevant question was asked. What structural reforms have you all done? Nothing at all. What structural reforms have you done? Nothing at all. You've now come with a big mandate. Shouldn't you be doing bold things? Sir? And he also said, only 11 structural reforms have been made in the last 22 years. I'm quoting him. The economy is absolutely weak, he said. So where are the bold decisions, he said. Not a single structural reform in the budget speech or in the budget document. He said it, sir. I heard him intently. I just want to draw your attention, sir, through you, chairman, sir. The goods and service tax is the biggest reform we have done by this government. Isn't that structural reform? Isn't that structural reform? Has he forgotten that? And in fact, for passing, for passing the GST, sir, what level of obstruction did they face, uh, produce? She has not. She has not yielded. Sir, I am not yielding now, sir. Please. I am not yielding now, sir. Sorry. Please, please. please. You may say it, sir, but I will not. We can't now. give an explanation. No, no, Anand Sarmaji, please. Anand Sarmaji, Anand Sarmaji, please. They were obstructing us. Yes, Swat Malik, Swat Malik, members should not talk to each other. Nothing will go on record other than what the ministry is saying. Please. No, please. People know it. Why should we? This, no, this is not argument. Please, please. No, 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 no. This is not the way. Sir. Please, members are developing a new habit and a bad habit of sitting and talking. Second, standing without permission of the chair and speaking. And thirdly, making noise also. My point is, if you want to make any voice, you have an opportunity. When you got an opportunity, when you got, please, when you got an opportunity, you made your points. First time, in detail, the finance minister is trying to respond to each and every point. We should be happy. If there are discrepancies, something wrong, you know the way to correct it also and you can give a you can give a notice also and it will be taken up in a appropriate manner minister sir please. on the gst oh there's no denial 
the whole house supported in passing it. Well, take the credit if you want. But it happened during our government. It cannot be denied. Okay, sir? The second. Second, sir. But sir, the, the, second. Po the point uh, Anand Sharma is making, you have made, taken a good move. And uh, there is a wise opposition. They support it. So, yes, thank you for that. <laughs> that but no. it happened, sir. It happened. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Levin... That this very GST was opposed by the BJP from 2008 to 2000. We are not having again class debate. After, after addressing the Minister, 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 Finance Minister, Finance Minister, Finance Minister, please, please. Sir. I would have been happy if this chart of these things were there during the debate itself. So I agree, sir. GST with all the cooperation across the country by state governments, by the opposition here, although their prominent leaders keep calling it Gabbar Singh tax even today. <laughs> so let's not forget that. Gabbar Singh tax is it? And you supported Gabbar Singh uh, tax, sir? I am astonished. Now they want to take credit for it? And uh, they now accuse me for not giving credit? Excuse me. No, please. Excuse please. me. Choose any one. This Choose is not a bazaar. This is Rajasabha. You want Sabha. credit please. for GST Gabbar Singh tax? You take it. Sir. Next, sir, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code was in 2016 as a unified framework for resolving insolvency and back bankruptcy matters, again a structural reform. Now let me go to the other structural reforms because former minister said only 11 in 22 years, but within the five years, what are the structural reforms we have done? Amalgamation of public sector banks, to re-app the benefits of economies of scale, improved access to capital and cover a larger geographical spread. That was done by us. Startup India and Stand Up India initiatives have evidently proved India's global ranking as a business destination. Radical changes in FDI policy regime, most sectors on automatic route to FDI done by this government. Special trust on key development sectors, including rural roads, housing, railways, power, highways, and digital infrastructure. And to support farmers, direct income support at the rate of 6,000 per year has been introduced, announced under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi. Again, structural reform. Sir, much before even I go into the next the DBT and the Aadhaar, they may have started it to the extent which we can spread it, give support statutorily, and also show using DBT, the government has saved several crores of rupees which were otherwise getting pilfered. DBT and Aadhaar, reducing the tax burden on middle class, individual taxpayers having a taxable annual income up to 5 lakhs will get full tax rebates. Government has invested for recapitalization of public sector banks, push to infrastructure development through Bharat Mala Pariyojana, lower income tax for companies with annual turnover up to 400 crores, special package including a slew of labor friendly measures to promote employment generation in textile sector, Developing inland waterways to shift a significant portion of inland cargo movement from road to rail. Development of large public infrastructure on land parcels held by central ministries and CPSCs all across the country. Action plan to deepen the market for long-term bonds. Don't miss that. Development of social stock exchange, very important, sir. I know a lot of members have already been very concerned about funds not being available, options not existing for social sector voluntary organizations. Development of social stock exchange, absolutely progressive idea which we have come up with. Even in the Western countries, many of them have not yet begun. Some of them have already done. But development of social stock exchange on electronic fundraising platform for listing social enterprises and voluntary organizations. A very transparent way in which funding for these, uh, these organizations can be done. Nirmalaji, sir, 2.30, non-official day. I agree, sir. I agree, sir. I agree, sir. I'll tell you just a minute.
responding very well. I am not. Uh, I have no Thank problem. You, but sorry, members has to go and come back. I appreciate uh, that. So I'll finish it. Please. I just want to underline, while saying that uh, only 11 uh, structural major reforms have been done in 22 years. The former finance minister took the mention of, or he mentioned only about abolition of license permit, FERA and FEMA, exchange control and rupee to find its own value. These kind of steps have been taken by them. I do give credit for that. How many are there? If I missed out on some, please correct me. But how many did he mention? Four. How much have I read for five years? More than 16. More than 16. So, former finance minister, it can be even more. He mentioned. Yeah, I've said it. I've said it. I've said he mentioned only four. There can be more. I've said it. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Please. You carry Sir. On. Carry on, please. This is not going on record. Why are you wasting your energy? Already you are hungry. Then spending more energy will be problem. Sir, there's nothing in the budget. Again, the former minister said that there's Excuse nothing me. in the budget which will increase household savings. I'd like to draw the attention of the House through you, sir. Government has taken various measures for investment promotion. I'd just like to list them. They will have a bearing on the savings because the huge squeezing out which is happening will be reduced and there shall be greater funds and we'll also want more people to come into this fold of, you know, uh, buying shares, retail, purchase of shares and also savings. We have liberalized FDI in policy. Proposed 100% FDI will be permitted for insurance intermediaries. Local sourcing norms will be eased for FDI in single band retail sector. Hopefully that will promote a lot more buying and selling at local areas, thereby giving more people more money in their hands, real money. The budget proposed to increase the statutory limit for FPI investments in a company from 24% to sectoral foreign investment limit with option given to the concerned corporates to limit it to a lower threshold. Increasing the annual turnover limit, which I've already mentioned, 250 to 400 crores. The infrastructure development fund, the 100 lakh crores. Then public-private partnership model for the railways. And scheme, the spurti about which I've spoken a lot, mudra for 1 lakh for women, 70,000 crores for bank recapitalization are all ways in which small savings will increase. So then, very important point which former minister raised. Only 30 lakh people have got health benefits. 43% toilets are not usable because lack of water. I just want to draw the attention of the house, sir, through you. The above issue pertains to scheme implementation which may be replied by the concerned ministry at the time of discussion related to the detailed demand for grants. But however, the following may be noted. <coughs> Under Swachh Bharat Mission, Grameen, the in incentive for individual toilet has been increased from 10,000 to 12,000 crores to provide for water availability, the point that the honorable former minister raised, including for storing water, for hand washing and cleaning. Further, under the Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen, rural pans are used which require only one to two liters of water for flushing. A thought has been given even for that. Then, sir, as per the results of the National Annual Rural Sanitation Survey 2018-19, conducted through an independent verification agency under World Bank's support to Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen, 96.5% of the households who had access to toilets are using them. So if there was not water, why will, how will they use? 96.5% are using them and that is not Government of India saying, it's an independent organization saying it. So they are in the World Bank, so please remember that. Sir, they are, if they use it, with the, will they use it without water, sir, don't, please? Don't, don't get into that. Uh -huh. So, no allocation for the maintenance of PMGSY. I remember him taking the name of his own native town, Sivaganga. I think I'll draw his attention through you, sir. 
maintenance management of rural roads. At present, the main features inbuilt in the PMGSY Gramin Sadak Yojana for maintenance are as, as follows. All PMGSY roads are covered by the five-year maintenance contracts. They are maintenance contract is inbuilt, sir. To be entered into along with the construction contract with the same contractor in accordance with the standard bidding document, SBD. Maintenance funds to service the contract is to be budgeted by state governments and placed at the disposable, uh, disposal of the SRRD, uh, SRRDA in a separate maintenance account. It exists. Please use it for Sivaganka. On expiry of five-year post-construction maintenance period, even after five years that is, these roads are to be placed under the zonal maintenance contracts consisting of five-year maintenance including renewal as per cycle. So the next five years are also made provision for. State governments are stipulated to make, take adequate steps to build up capacity in the district panchayats and endeavor to devolve funds and functionaries onto these panchayats from the state government onto the panchayats in order to enable them to maintain and manage maintenance contracts for rural roads. So the protocol is adequately laid down. Till such a time district panchayats take over maintenance functions, the PIUs, the panchayat institutions, will continue to be responsible for the administration of post-construction and zonal maintenance contracts of the PMGSY and not the union government and not Modi Sarkar. So please, sir, I won't go further into the maintenance of roads. One last thing which was absolutely interesting. Sir, what, what was uh, former minister telling us, sir? We have to introduce a bill also. Sir, I'm sorry, sir. Please give me a few minutes, sir. I'll yeah. finish it with this. What was, his, what, was, what was the comment, sir? The lenders of money, money lenders, can probably tell us. Uh, I don't know if I have the exact words. That this five trillion U.S. dollar business. Aha! Right. Uh -huh, I'll come to that. Sorry? No, no. Other members are also. Today she has covered a wide range of issues. Sir? If she, if you want, she will cover further. Are you ready? <laughs> Please, please. No, let us be. Let us be serious. She is speaking on facts and rebutting the argument. If at all there is a problem, you can again take recourse to alpha the rules. Please. Please, ma. Sir, I'm sorry. I... I, I understand. You have to take care of your colleague. <laughs> no, no, no. One minute. I'll, I'll pro probably come with the exact wordings. I don't want because I don't want any one of you to mistake me. I'm sorry, sir, I'm seeking your indulgence. I'll finish with this. Thank you. The goal of 5 trillion economy, sir, oh, it's just a mathematical calculation. A money lender can do it and let you know that it will get compounded. It's all right. Every couple of years, the economy will double. Sir, if that's indeed the case, sir, why are all we, why are all of us here? Why should there be a government? And I'm tempted to ask, indeed, if money doubles, the economy doubles anyway, just by the moneylender business, he can keep his kata, accounts keeping will tell you that, don't bother, sit quiet, money, the economy will double in every few years. Is that why during UPA, no attention was given to the economy, but scandals were going on. All attention there. Economy will anyway double. Economy will anyway double in every five years. Don't bother, we'll concentrate on doing what we need to. Please, please, please. Income, uh, increase our personal income. What is this, sir? 
What right. is the form of finance minister trying to imply? Please, Sir? please, please, please. please. I am sorry for having made an observation like that and right. slighted, mocked, ridiculed that governments didn't do anything. The country will, GDP will multiply every two, three, four, five years. Let me ask this question, sir. In the first 60 years of this country, in the first 60 of the years of this country, did it double every two years? Hindu rate of new growth was accused on us. Why didn't it double at that time? Right. That was a Congress government. Why didn't it double? Please, please, please. No, no, no. Oh, no, you thank please, you sir. very much, sir. No, 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 no. The contempt, the slight, the indifference, the subtle tongue in cheek, the subtle right. tongue in cheek, sir. I'm sorry, and therefore I have to come out fairly strongly on this: the inflation rate, the depreciation of the currency, the exchange rate. So many things will have to be managed so that this country's economy doubles. It's not that easy that only the money lender will keep an account and the economy will double on its own. I'm sorry, sir. With due respects to the former minister, from whom I honestly want to learn a lot of lessons. I will only say in the last few minutes, sir, you've been very indulgent to me and I'm sorry to all the members that I've held you back from your lunch and also the private members bills times one last word sir one last word i love to learn a lot of lessons from every former minister finance minister every every, every finance minister and but just because former finance minister has sort of slighted our targets didn't think it had any virtue I just want to say the lessons that I want to learn from his karyakal as finance minister. The voluntary disclosure income scheme, which was introduced by him. The controller and auditor general of India condemned the scheme, saying it's abusive and fraud, and genuine player taxpayers have suffered. Shouldn't I be learning a lesson, sir? I'll second say, 2008, the credit culture was something which has really laid a lot of burden on us. In 2014, sir, when we came, the burden was passed on us on the election eve. In order to earn some brownie points, the then finance minister, for containing fiscal deficit within the budgeted 4.8% of the GDP, left a huge burden of unpaid bills for the next government, which was our government in 14. We took the burden on ourselves. I have to learn a lesson, sir. The under-recoveries of the oil marketing companies alone were said to be 1.4 lakh crores. We inherited that. I have to learn a lesson from the former finance minister. Both in 2008 and 2013, four, sir, separate terms as finance minister, Sri Chidambaram, had accepted that the he had accepted, sir. He had accepted. I'm quoting him that the extent of inflation in the economy was worrisome. Extent of inflation was worrisome. It is common knowledge. I'm quoting, sir. It is common knowledge that the government of the day will pay a price for high inflation, especially if inflation persists over a long time. This he said on December 12, 2014, sir. 2013, he had said this. Lastly, the white paper on black money prepared by the then finance ministry under the finance minister Sri Pranab Mukherjee, a former president, in May 2012, said something. I'd like to quote it again. It had a boxed item, sir, on participatory notes. Quote, these instruments are traded overseas outside the direct purview of the SEBI surveillance, thereby raising many apprehensions about the beneficial ownership and the nature of funds invested in these instruments. Concerns have been raised that some of the money coming into the market via participatory notes could be unaccounted wealth camouflaged under the guise of FII investments. SEBI has been taking measures to ensure that participatory notes are not used as conduits for black money or terrorist funding. Close quotation. 
and this is the white paper released during the time of Sri Pranab Mukherjee. So, interestingly, P. Chidambaram, again, who took over as finance minister in 2013. Please, please, please. Yes, sir. My reply, sir. I'm finishing with this, sir. SEBI and the Directorate of Enforcement, which have, I'm quoting here, this is a speech given in, uh, in the Lok Sabha in 2013, so I'm not taking it from any other source. SEBI and the Directorate of Enforcement, which have a reg regulatory role in the matter, have not come across any instance of participatory notes being used for money laundering. FIIs are also required to provide an undertaking that they have not issued participatory notes to Indian residents or non-resident uh, Indians and KYC compliance norms have been followed for the beneficial owner of the participatory notes. And this was in 2013, sir. Final word coming from the Supreme Court, 2015, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm answering all of you all, if you don't mind. I wouldn't mind. I have no pleasure otherwise. I have, I'm duty bound to answer. Right, right. Sir, 2015. After that statement in Lok Sabha 2013 by the former minister, 2015, a Supreme Court appointed special investigation team entrusted with the task of suggesting measures to curb black money recommended. SEBI should do more to identify real owners of participatory notes and restrict their transfer. Many things can be added in the past also there have been concerns over Indian promoters using participatory notes. It is only after our government has come in, we've started the complete correction on participatory notes, sir. So lessons being learned from every finance minister, former finance minister. Thank you. So I'd like to submit it. Thank and I you. hope I've answered Thank all, you, the ministers, minister. all the members' yes. concerns. Hey, people want some uh, questions to be asked, but uh, there's no time. I'm not entertaining it because member seems to be... Right. So the house stands adjourned to meet at 3 p.m., not 2.30. 3